think uh, we're going to invite Yuri to the stage. And we're going to hear about open map tiles. Um, so I met Yuri when he was still working at Elastic, um, but he was already able to tell me the, the story of open map tiles and how open map tiles are going to change the world. And I have uh, Watched it, uh, watched it happen since then, and uh, sure enough, he wasn't he wasn't kidding. Um, open map tiles have uh, have started to change the world, and uh, and all these, uh, well, it sort of nicely complements the ability to generate um, dynamic web map tiles in the database, having a proper base map that has a standardized schema that has standardized style sheets for it. Um, open map tiles is a is a powerful, powerful thing. So uh, hey, there's Jerry. Um, uh, I'm going to hand it over to you. Fire up your, uh, fire up your share and, uh, and tell us the story. Let's get everyone as fired up about uh, open map tiles as I am. Thank you, Paul. Uh, mic check. Good. Here you go. Perfect. That's usually the biggest question with Zoom. Yeah. So, um, hi, my name is Yuri. I am still at Elastic, uh, happily employed here. Um, I will share some slides now. Let's see. Okay. We're good. How oh, that works. You've got a, something um, over top of your, there it goes. All good. All good. Excellent. So today I'm going to talk about open map tiles. This project was started a long time ago by about five years ago, actually, by a company called MapTiler, as well as some community contributors. Uh, it became a result of an OSM, if, I, if my memory serves me right, uh, OSM conference where we were discussing how should the community get together and generate vector tiles in a standardized open source way. There were some licensing issues at the time. So this was the result of that. So open, it's open source, it's multi-platform and it generates vector tiles. And um, there's links on your screen uh, where you can find out more about them. Essentially, it just converts OpenStreetMap data into vector tiles using PostGIS. Thank you, PostGIS. And it also uses other data sources such as Natural Earth and Wikidata, uh, fully Dockerized, extendable. You can create your own styles. You can create your own data layers uh, using the uh, open map tiles as the base. Um, so the project is very active. As I said, it's been running for over five years and has a uh, uh, number of folks constantly contributing to it. So I'm very happy about that. Um, there is, it, at the moment, it focuses on a general purpose map, all the basic stuff, uh, no ski layers. At the same time, the way it's structured is it tries to give you as much capability of adding new layers or customizing the existing ones as possible. Uh, at the moment, it generates about nine, 90 gigabytes of uh, uh, MB tiles snapshot with Zoom 14, you will to Zoom 18. Uh, there are some talks about making it to Zoom 15 uh, and uh, making it more precise, crisp, in especially, uh, especially useful for CQ, uh, city dwellers. Uh, it's used by numerous companies, including Elastic. And this is a little plug for Elastic's Kibana, which is a data visualization tool where we visualize billions of data points. Um, and it would not be possible without the open map tiles. The, tile, uh, the tiles on the right are generated by open map tiles project. And that's why Elastic is an active contributor and participant in the development. And this uh, currently, uh, this is a demo of the Compre Viejo, I'm probably mispronouncing it, uh, volcano eruption that was happening in Canary Islands not too long ago. Moving forward, um, so open map tiles, Git repo, there's two fundamental Git repos, one in uh, OMT itself, which is a configuration of the tiles, the SQL, data configuration, uh, impossible configuration, and many other things uh, on the data side. And there's the tools. The tools is the, uh, a number of Python and other uh, scripts 
uh, plus Docker's Docker completion uh, that creates all the tooling necessary to build it. You can technically use them completely separately. You can use Open Map Tiles tools for other, uh, for your own custom layers, uh, and that's why they're kept as two different repos. Um, I am not going to read out the actual topics uh, because I, that's uh, for the, uh, wh whoever is going to be viewing it later can pause it and read them. And I think they're simple enough to not to focus on that. Um, so this is more interesting. And this is how does one start with open map tiles? So as I mentioned earlier, it works on Linux, Mac, uh, Mac OS, and Windows with WSL2. Uh, it requires Docker and Docker Compose and Make. Eventually, maybe we'll be able to get rid of Make and make it purely Docker. But for now, these are the requirements. Um, most of the testing is done on Linux due to how GitHub actions work. But uh, quite a few of contributors do use Windows and Mac. Um, the general process is you just run a set of Make commands and they generate tiles and tiles uh, file. Um, you can also use tile server later on to serve from MB tiles, or there is post serve, which serves tiles directly from Postgres, or you can use a, um, a different uh, capability. Since, since the process generates a function that generates a tile, you can use that function with any other type of system to uh, to serve it, if, I, if my memory serves me right, uh, Paul actually worked on, Paul Ramsey worked on a tile server, uh, not a tile server, on a server based on Postgres. So I'm, uh, I believe that it's possible to use that directly. Some interesting internal stuff. I mean, this is where things get interesting and uh, I had to plug in some um, techie stuff. So um, when layer specs get converted into a, a impossible and SQL functions, um, we end up with gig ginormous get MBT function. Let me try to move this thing a little to the side so it doesn't obscure the view. It's essentially a function where you say, get me an MBT, zoom X and Y, and it, retur it returns a byte blob and the key. Key is a hash just for simplified uh, serving. This way, uh, it optimizes the cache on the client side, browser client side, and uh, any intermediary uh, uh, caching servers. The function just uses gzip. Again, huge thanks to Paul uh, Ramsey for creating that function uh, to aggregate, which puts together all the layers. From, uh, uh, from the MBT uh, generating functions together into one blob and generates an MD MD5 of that blob. If we look closer in the code, we're, again, this is, this is just a part of that code. I actually removed a lot of, of it just to make it semi-readable on the right. We're not gonna go in too deep into it. Uh, you can see that each layer is represented by its own uh, snippet of code that generates MBT just for that layer, and they're all concatenated together. If there's no data, it just generates an empty string, which concatenates just fine. Um, so each layer looks like this. It's uh, ST as MBT uh, with some, uh, based on some envelope, the envelope could be extended if, if there is a, uh, some uh, buffer that's required around it. And um, there is also the, the tool set generates a lot of functions. Each layer generates functions for so that uh, the, the main function does not get too complicated and uh, can be reasoned out uh, part by part. So layer water, for example, returns uh, geometries just for water layer. And uh, there's functions like that for all the other layers as well. Plus, in addition, it also uses SMBT geom to ge uh, generate geometry, plus all the other uh, fields that are required. Um, so again, thanks to Apologies, 
uh, all this work is uh, we can do all this work in Postgres and in PostGIS, which means it's perfectly horizontally scalable. If we need faster tau generation, we simply add more servers or make the servers more powerful with more cores. It's a very uh, near linear scaling. The coordination of the entire tau generation process, if it's done as a snapshot, is also very simple because um, uh, you just need a tiny machine with two cores that will combine all these uh, all these layers. Uh, oh, sorry, all the tiles and put them into um, SQL uh, SQLite database, which is MB tiles, or it could uh, output them somewhere else. There is a tile life jQuery plugin, which uh, plugin for tile life that does all the load balancing and validation to ensure that the servers are uh, produce the right the expected data. And um, if you have multiple servers, regardless of how you uh, either clone them or replicate uh, uh, do replication, uh, it uses them all. Obviously, other load balance uh, Postgres load balancing can be used uh, in place. Tools. So there is a lot of useful tools um, to work with MBT, MBT, MBT tiles. Uh, there's PostServe, which is a simple debug tile server that just does the real-time tile extraction from um, Postgres and uh, gives the result to, to the users. Uh, there is Download OSM, which allows you to uh, use multi uh, parallel downloading from all the mirrors that clone OSM data, which brings down the download speed to under five minutes uh, of the entire planet file, which is quite quite nice without overloading each individual mirror. Um, MBTile tools uh, is just a general uh, toolbox where you can copy uh, some tiles from one file to another or update the metadata based on the content of the file, et cetera. Um, one interesting uh, tidbit that we're using when generating tiles is that we're actually cheating a little bit. We do not want to generate all the tiles on the planet for Zoom 13 and 14, um, if, you, if you don't have to. Uh, because, I mean, for example, water tiles and empty land tiles are all more or less similar and do not have too many extra features after 13, 14. Uh, if there's nothing on at the level uh, if, the, if there is nothing on level 12, most likely 13 and 14 are also going to be empty. I have not seen uh, a tile to the uh, that disputes that. And so what we do is we scan the Zoom 12 uh, using the MB tile tools has the capability of doing that. It detects all the duplicates uh, that occur a lot in the data, and then it imputes, it just um, generates all the Z13 and later Z14 uh, tiles for those empty Z12 tiles. This way, uh, when it does the generation, it only generates those that are not empty, makes making the whole tile generation significantly faster. Uh, there's test performance, the debugging, and other tools. Um, there has been a lot of Updates in the latest, latest open map tiles uh, version 3.12. Um, we started aggregating buildings on level 13, which makes it much more pleasant uh, when viewed uh, when you look at the large cities from uh, from high up. Um, other additional features were added to the core of the system. Um, there is uh, on the right you can see a an example of what performance tool, tooling looks like. It will show us uh, every kind of, every submission by the community or by maintainers uh, generate these kind of reports. So we can instantly see if the generation got significantly faster or slower, or if the tile sizes have changed in significant way. Um, uh, so again. A lot of uh, changes and updates have been uh, happening uh, in the last release. And uh, for the next major release, we we are thinking of doing Zoom 15. Uh, 
there is talks about custom and add-on layers and uh, layers that cust get customized on the fly with configurations without actually changing the code. Um, there's even plans to move some of the style changes into the open map tile repo itself. This way, OMT repo will contain snippets, or each layer will contain snippets of um, styles relevant to that layer, and they can all be compiled together during the build steps. And uh, a lot of interesting data changes, uh, schema changes, etc. Would not be possible without community. Um, I've listed some of the uh, recent active contributors, um, but there's way more, uh, a lot more contributors. Thank you. Could not have been done without uh, the community, and could not be have done been done without MapTyler support because MapTyler is the uh, who, company that dedicated a lot of their resources in supporting this effort and. Uh, moving it forward. So that brings us to the end of the slides. Essentially, it's an open source community licensed under BSD, MIT, CC BY, so highly permissive licensing. We've got, gotten burned by licensing in the past. Let's keep it as open as possible. Mm. Used and developed by companies and enthusiasts and won't would not have existed without PostGIS. If you want to talk to us, come to OSM Slack. There's an uh, uh, URL to get yourself invited into OSM Slack if you don't have an account there already, and join the Open Map Tiles channel. Uh, I'll do a quick, I mean, just to show what it looks like, this is um, a little, I, I generated Romania really quickly using the steps I outlined in the presentation. I mean, let me move this. Uh, so you can just view what it looks like. There is a server. I mean, it's a tile server. Everyone, uh, by, by now, tile servers are kind of commodity, I would say, but there's still a lot of fun and, and a lot of ways they can be improved. So I hope this becomes like the standard of such tile serving. Um, this is the uh, main repo, uh, open map tiles. Everything is in layers. So you can see, uh, for example, there's a transportation layer, and then there is a uh, transportation YAML, which defines what the layer looks like, uh, specifies which tables it, uh, it requires, does the buffering, like all the, uh, all the configuration that goes into impossum and in uh, SQL generation. Uh, for example, the class field, for example, there is all the logic for, uh, for field uh, parsing from OSM data. Uh, that's actually right here in the YAML. Um, and then if we, with all the volumes, et cetera, a lot, a lot of information. And if we look, for example, in SQL files, there is a standard SQL, and then there is some magical SQL. For example, this class, this enum, gets auto-generated from the YAML, so that we only have one place where all the uh, possible values for class are defined. Um, this is pretty much it. I mean, here I can show you what the full SQL kind of looks like, but this is not full SQL. Uh, there's a lot of, for example, uh, uh, different uh, name tar uh, parsing for different fields. Uh, but there's much more because, as I said, there is each layer generates a lot of SQL, um, uh, for both for re uh, the functions to update the data, real-time updates, as well as just for tau generation. So uh, at this point, I'll stop sharing and since it's no oh, um i will switch to q a mode let me see what questions have been asked phantom postgres 14 definitely yes so uh thank you tara um there is a question uh do, do we plan to upgrade to postgres 14 and the uh, issue about jit issue uh quickly uh the um, with Postgres 13, I believe, JIT was introduced, and it's a wonderful addition, except for 
open map tiles. Our query is so ginormous that instead of being 300 millisecond, it becomes five second runtime. Not ideal when you generate billions of these tiles. Uh, eventually, I do hope Postgres optimizes it away somehow, um, but there's not much we on open map tiles side can do to solve this issue, so JIT has to be disabled. Um, do we plan to upgrade to Postgres? Definitely. We, we want to stay at, as uh, close to the latest Postgres as possible. Uh, once we, it passes the, uh, the performance testing and we know that uh, it's stable to generate all the tiles. Uh, let's see. No open questions. No open questions. Chat. So, um, <clears throat> oh, there's a Martin Davis question at the bottom of the chat. Have you noticed any performance improvements from recent Postgres versions? Um, I have not, to be honest, un analyzed the different Postgres versions just yet. Uh, I know that there has been a lot of work in that space. Uh, the problem is it's a it's a convoluted topic because there's so many different moving pieces. Yeah. There is proj upgrades and uh, geos upgrade. And there's all these libraries that get upgraded as well as there is a core Postgres get updated. So um, it's not, we usually, when we upgrade, we try to upgrade several things at once, just so that we don't spend too much effort on uh, evaluating each individual piece. Uh, and maybe it's not the ideal. Maybe we should do like them separately, like Postgres, Postgres, then Postgres, Postgres, then Postgres with a different dependency version. But that becomes a bit of a nightmare to manage. So um, I'm sure there will be a lot of performance improvements just reading the feedback from the community. But I do not personally have any data to back this up yet. Yeah, in theory, if you upgrade everything, it should be in aggregate faster. But yes. uh, it's hard to know for sure. Um, I found reading through the directions on how to use um, open map tiles and all the bits and pieces and Docker bits and pieces a little bit frightening. And I wanted to know if, uh, I don't know, is there, is there a large population of people who sort of come fresh to the project and said, okay, I'm just gonna follow the directions and... Well, um, recently it has become, uh, been, becoming more and more stable and simpler to start. Uh, unfortunately, we have several hard dependencies and that is Docker mm. uh, and the make. Um, both are not ideal for Windows users. Right. So WSL is required. Um, beyond that, uh, running things with quick start is probably the absolute easiest way to get started because one would just have to type that slash quick start yeah. and give an area name, preferably something small, uh, at least at first. And 10 minutes later, you have the mm -hmm. tile set. Then you yeah. can just do make tile server start and start tile, tile server and you're done. You can just browse it in the browser. Uh, to go beyond that, to actually start changing SQL, well, yes, you would have to read up the SQL code and try to manipulate that. But uh, we try to add as much documentation as possible. There is a very elaborate site I can show you. It's openmaptiles.org. Uh, has a lot of data, a lot of information about schema, uh, where each table in, uh, in where each layer, how it gets generated from each uh, table, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because it's actually a two-dimensional problem. There is a layers and there is, uh, there is features in the layer, but then there's also zooms. So uh, zooms multiplied by layers, there produces a, big, a bit of a matrix of where things yeah. come from. Okay. But quick start is your friend. Like for example, uh, um, Romania that I was demoing, uh, that took me under 15 minutes to generate from clean start, uh, not counting the download time of the Docker images. Right. Uh, probably another minute or two, depending on your connection. Yeah. Okay. I'll give it a try. 
I'll, please. I'll get past my fear. <laughs> don't don't be afraid of it. And if not, if something doesn't work, we're very friendly on Slack. If you use Slack or file an issue and get help, people are very quick to respond. Wonderful. Um, I think that's it. It's been a long day. It has. Thank you very much for finishing up. And uh, yeah, thank you everybody thank for, you for, having, for having me and coming and telling us about Open Map Thomas. This has been very, very, very good.